Hi and welcome! I'm Mrs. Cutebelts and today I'm going to show you how I created this wool painting chickens in flower garden. I have recorded every single step and I will try to show you as much as possible so you can recreate it if you want to. There is template included and I will also share with you how I finished the face using the embroidery hoop. For easier navigation there are chapters created for this video so you can jump around if needed. Let's start with everything you will need. Check the description box of this video or the pinned comment to find the link where you can download the template for this project. I have included the original image that looks exactly as our final product today and also a mirrored version. This will come handy if you are using iron transfer pencil like I am today. This is from Clover. I will leave a link in the description box where you can purchase it from Amazon. Remember that you can always resize the template if needed. I'm using 20 cm bamboo embroidery hoop to frame my work, so my template is sized accordingly. For the packing, I'm using 100% wool felt. This one is gray and thickness is 1 mm. Of course, you are going to need a felting mat. I would suggest you use foam mat or brush mat, whichever you already have and works for you the best. For the needles, I'm using 42 triangles from Heidi Feathers and 40 triangles from my local needle felting shop. And you will also see me using multi-needle tool. It's not mandatory, but it makes the process faster in the finishing stages. I'm using three 42 triangles in it. And now it's time to talk about the fiber. I would suggest you watching this tutorial and then coming back to this section and looking into your own wool collection and deciding on the fibers you want to use. Here you can see all the variations of greens I actually used in my wool painting. As you can see, most of them are carded wool bats. And the same goes for the sky. As you can see, I used warm, natural white wool and pure white that is bleached also for the highlights, some grays and some blues in my skies. I would say there are no strict rules. However, I would pay close attention of the colors of my chickens. I have the perfect chicken color and then I used more intense and vibrant yellow for the shadow parts like for the wings, etc. Some browns and caramel tones and the white, pure bleached white for the highlights. And of course, we cannot forget about the beak and feet. I used some oranges peachy tone and browns for them and also I have black that I used for the eye. Here are all the colors I used for the florals. Again, there are no strict rules and you can just check what you have in your stash. Last but not least, you are going to need thread and sewing needle to frame your piece. As I already mentioned, today I'm using Clover Iron-On Transfer Pencil. To use this tool, make sure that you are using flipped image of this design you want to see on the felt sheet. I would also suggest to sharpen the pencil quite often during this process. This will give you more precise and sharp lines. This is my first time using it, but as I understand, this pencil should work with any fabric that is usually used as a background for needle felted paintings. Here are my results. As you can see it was quick and easy and I wasn't extremely precise here, but this will work great as a guideline. Now I'm turning it over so the pencil is facing the felt sheet. I will just quickly run to my laundry room and iron over it. Here you can see how it turned out. I think it's great and it was extremely easy. I am definitely going to use this pencil from now on. It's great for printed designs, also your own drawings. You can go over them too. And I wonder how it would work with photos. We'll try it someday. I found it on Amazon and a link will be in the description and in pinned comment as promised. 
First, I wanted to show you something in case you are new to 2D needle felting. As you can see, the mat I'm using is way smaller than the image I'm creating today. Never worry about it. You can always work in sections and turn your mat in direction that makes the most sense for the area you are working on. Today we are going to start with the background. We are not going to finish it in detail, that will follow later, but now I'm laying down middle value green for the grass. I will first lay it out, thin, thin layers like this, small pieces, making sure that I'm not really going over the area where I have my felting mat underneath, and then I will take my felting needles and just lightly felt it down. I'm not really worried that the felt sheet is peeking through when I felt down all of the fluff. Because the goal of this layer is just to create a thin, thin base for the values that will follow later. I'm choosing the middle green, the middle blue, you will see later on, and just adding the wool there and making sure that I'm lightly overlapping with the outline of my chickens. The goal for this is to create a base layer that would not be in the color of my felt sheet. Because when I started needle felting 2D images, I noticed that if I start with the main subject and then fill in the background, I often end up with a line between those two where the felt sheet is clearly showing through. So this will help you to avoid it. I would really suggest you to use the middle values you have chosen for each of the sections of the painting, like the middle value of green. Just look on all the greens you have gathered and you plan to use and choose the middle one. This will help you to blend the colors later on. You see I just felted down a bit of darker green down there. And you will see in a minute how easy it is to blend it in. If I have the middle value green in the background, it already looks a bit blended. And uh, when I overlap it with the same middle value again, you will see how easily it blends. We will look at this again in more detail later on, but I hope this helped you to understand my general approach. So now I'm trying to fill around half of my image with the green. I'm paying close attention to the outlines for the chickens. Flowers can be a bit more abstract, so I'm not so worried about them. But when it comes to the chickens, I really want the shapes to look as I have intended them in the sketch. So I'm now really trying to felt the green as close to the lines as possible, but not completely covering them. Please note that I have sped up the video here and cut out the sections where nothing really happens, where I'm sorting my wool out in the background and you cannot see it on the camera, but I have included all the important parts in the real speed. I do this to make the overall videos a bit shorter and easier to focus on the important parts. The total amount of the footage was around six hours for this video, it doesn't take so long to actually felt it, but when I'm filming, I'm always having some trouble with the lights or with the camera, and I have to make some tweaks there, and this makes the overall footage really long. So here is the line I'm aiming at, and I will fill it in with the green now, and then we will move on to the sky. Now when I start to work on the skies, I'm first adding this light light green, just a small section to later on blend together with the blues and whites we will see in the sky. Don't be afraid to overlap this green with the previous one, 
And as I already mentioned, I'm not really worried about covering the flowers. Flowers are a bit abstract, so I can freehand them later on, but actually the red shows through this thin layer of wool pretty nicely and I was able to locate the lines with ease later on when I was felting the flowers in place. I have read a lot of comments that skies are particularly hard for beginner 2D needle felters, so here is a little trick for you. Instead of adding a single layer of blue color that sometimes makes things a bit hard when deciding on the clouds and everything, you can add tiny, tiny, super thin layers of blue, grays and whites at random and just lightly felt them down. Remember to work in really, really thin layers and don't worry about the background poking through. You will finish the skies later on when you have your main subject in place. We will have our chickens felted in detail and it will be really easy to see the levels of contrast, the highlights we have in our image and this will help us to decide on what kind of blues and how much of it we want to see in the skies and if we want to add defined clouds or we will stick with the abstract style we have right now. Let me know in the comments if this is helpful for you. Now that my base for the background is ready, we can start working on the first chicken. I'm realigning my felt sheet to make sure that most of the chicken is placed on my felting mat. Let's start with the face. I'm taking my chicken yellow and simply covering the head. As you can see, I'm focusing on the outline first. I'm working with thin layers, remember that you can always add more fiber if needed. And I'm guiding the fiber using my fingers, making sure that it follows the outline. You can also see that my pokes are now really focused on this outline part here to make sure that the red line is completely covered and that the outline of my chicken is really crisp and defined. This will help me to later on add the highlights and the shading where needed and not worry about my chicken being out of shape or not really well defined. You can also use your needle to lightly tuck the fiber in the direction you want it to go. Just make sure that you are feeling confident about this and that you do not feel the pull with the needle. Otherwise, if you're doing it a bit too harshly, you risk breaking the needle. And I would also like to mention that the same principles apply when you are working around the eye. I really try not to cover the outline of the eye, so it's easier for me to later fill it with black. Eyes sometimes can be a bit tricky because you can easily change their shape and size without knowing it if you do not have the best outline for them. Other than that, now we are just simply adding the yellow. It's time to add the eye. I'm taking tiny amount of black carded wool and I'm rolling it between my fingers for quite a while to make this little ball shape. I'm placing where the eye should be and taking a single 40 triangle needle to really felt it in place. First I'm focusing on the center for a couple of steps and then you will see me working on the outline. I'm not holding my needle completely perpendicular against the felting surface. I'm working towards the center with every stab. This helps me to keep the shape of the eye very well defined. And also this will help me to make the ball smaller. 
Again, I suggest you to start with tiny amount of wool if needed. You will always be able to add a bit more. But if you add too much, the eye will just look really bulky and three-dimensional compared to the rest of the felting. You just saw me turning the felt sideways. This is another hack that I like to use when working with eyes and with actually any object in my wool paintings. This will give you better access to any of the areas and help you to keep the direction of your pokes more intentional and less risky for stepping yourself. See how much the black has shrunk. This eye looks way more proportional than it did when I started to add it. Now that I have a very well-defined eye shape that I like, I can add a bit more of the chicken yellow around here to create better base for the future shading and other details. Again, I'm just making sure that I'm not covering the eye I just added. I like to add highlights in the eyes, so here I'm taking a tiny amount of pure bleached white and rolling it between my fingers to create a super tiny ball. I'm placing this ball on the upper right corner of the eye. Be careful not to felt it through the felt sheet, because it's actually possible if you felt it a bit too long. When you're happy with the shape, you can move on to the next part. I'm using this warm caramel brown to define the upper eyelid. This is wool tops, so all of the fibers are going in the same direction. I roll them between my fingers a bit to create a single strand that's well defined, and I'm just creating the upper eyelid line for my chicken. Take your time and work slowly. This is the actual painting part of this project, so you do not have to rush anywhere. I'm continuing the warm brown in the inner corner too a bit, and then I'm simply taking the scissors and cutting the excess wool off. Now it's time to define the lower eyelid. I have chosen this stormy gray for it and I'm taking even smaller amount. Now I simply have to connect the two ends of my warm brown line. And again, I'm cutting the excess off using the scissors. Now, even with the eye and highlight in it, my chicken still looks a bit flat. So what I'm doing now is using the gray we already used for the lower eyelid and extending this section a bit, adding a tiny dark gray marking. And with the warm brown, I'm also extending the upper eyelid a bit more and then adding a little shaded area for the ear of the chicken. I did not base this wool painting on any particular image. This chicken here is compilation from multiple images of chickens. I just typed baby chicken in Google and uh, looked up a bunch of images and this is what I came up with. So if you would like to replicate my wool painting, you can follow along because I will leave as much of the footage here as possible so you can see every shading I added. I will use the warm brown in multiple places of the face and then follow it with the very warm yellow. I find that this specific combination gives the most natural look and adds a lot of dimension to my little chicken's face. Please let me know in the comments if these videos with a lot of detail are helpful for you. I would really love to hear from you and read any suggestions you have on these tutorials. I will get a bit quiet for a while now, so you can watch me felt and follow along if you want to.
you are creating this wall painting with me and you feel like you have added a bit too much of the brown in any place like I felt here, remember that you can always layer a bit of the chicken yellow on top of it that you used as the base and felt it down to blend the colors. Here you can see how it beautifully worked out and gave a lot of dimension to my little chicken's head. And we cannot forget about the highlights. As I added the highlights in the eye on the upper right, I will do the same for the head in general. Back of the head would be the place that would have the most light shining on it. So I will add pure white here. I'm using thin layers, again you can always add more if needed, and blending it with the chicken yellow that I used before. At this stage I will also add a bit more of the base color and move towards the neck a bit to finish off the head part. And now it's time to finish off the shading parts of the head. I'm coming in with the warm yellow color, which is really bright yellow. I'm not sure why it's picking up orange on the camera. Believe me, it's just really warm yellow. And I'm following the base guides I have already created with the light brown. At this part it might feel like the previous shading you did for the ear and for the eyelids is starting to disappear a bit, don't worry about that. It's actually nicely building up and you can now come in with a little bit darker shade of brown, still choosing a warm brown in this case, but you can make your own color choices too. And I'm adding a little detail for the upper eyelid just to make the eye pop out a little bit more. And I'm also working on my ear again, because the photos I was looking at had really defined ears, and I think it also helps to create the illusion of the really round and realistic chicken's head if you have all of these details. So I'm just adding tiny, tiny amounts of the brown here and blending it out. Finally, we can work on the beak. I'm starting with this salmon color and I'm rolling it in between my fingers for a little bit just to make it easier to control as the beak is really tiny. I'm filling in all of the beak with this color to create a base. Of course we will add more intense colors for the details, but this is important to add some kind of base because it will help you to understand what you want to do with the other colors and help you to avoid background color peeking through. Okay, now we have to keep in mind the direction of the light. The lower part of the beak will be in the shadow, so I'm using this stormy gray that has some blues in it and filling in the lower part of the beak. Now I'm taking this warm and bright orange and focusing on the root part of the beak. I'm not an expert in anatomy of a chicken, but I think calling this the root of the beak is correct. I'm making sure I'm blending this color together with the grays we added. Don't worry if right now it looks a bit too intense. Remember that we haven't worked on the upper part of the beak yet. Speaking of which, this is the place where the nostrils are located. So there are a lot of shapes and a lot of shade and thus I can just use the darker brown we used for the final accents for the ears and upper eyelid. And I'm creating sort of like a zigzag line on the upper part of the beak here. 
and this will help us to create an illusion of the nostril. See how I went in towards the top of the beak in the middle section there, then back to the face and back to the beak again, creating this zigzag line. And when we will add a lot more colors for the beak, this will really define the nostrils. Now I'm again taking the bright orange and adding it at the root part of the beak, but this time I will fill in all of the upper part with it. Our little beak is finished and we can move on to the body. Here again I'm starting out with adding the base color and following the outline first. All the same principles apply as we used for the head. But this time I am not going to fill in the whole area of the body with the base color. I will divide this section in separate parts. So now we are working on the chest part and then we will move on to the legs. This will help us to focus on the shadows a bit better because in this stage the shadows are pretty easy. You will understand what I'm talking about in just a second. Chickens do have quite a round head, so there should be a shadow underneath it. Let's build a soft shadow here. I'm using the warm brown first and it might look a bit too intense, so I'm layering the warm bright yellow on top of it and blending it together. It still does look pretty intense, so I will add the base yellow I have used for the most of my chicken's body on top of this section to blend it in even more. See how soft it turned out. And now we are creating a bit of a darker shadow underneath the beak and I'm using the light brown here. Remember how I mentioned that the shadows on the body are pretty logical? Well, let's look at example here. The wings of the chicken is sticking out of the body a bit, right? So this means that they will drop a little bit of shadow. You can follow this logic and start simple. Take the light brown and add a little bit of shadow underneath the wings before you have filled the wing itself and you can follow it with the brighter yellow that you have already used for the shadows on the different parts of the body and this will help you to later on understand how to extend the shadows towards the body. Here you can see how I'm doing it. The color just simply is guiding you. Of course, this scale builds up over time, so if you do not feel confident right now, you can just follow along what I'm doing here. That's exactly the reason why I'm leaving so much of the footage in this tutorial, and you can always look up photos online. 
I'm also adding a soft shadow on the tummy because my chicken is not facing the sun so the tummy will be in the shade too but mainly I'm focusing on adding shade underneath the wings including the small line on the wings you will see me filling in later on this is the part where the first feathers are forming and there is usually a little bit of shadow there too Again, I will get quiet for a while so you can just watch me felting. We have now reached the leg and you will see me using the stormy gray again. This time I'm adding shadow on the lower part of the leg because this part is not only away from the sun but it's also underneath the little chicken so there should be a lot of shade there. Don't worry if it looks really dark at first, we will blend it later on. I'm adding the same gray in tiny amounts on the lower part of the belly because this should also be really in the shadow. There will be a high point of the tie coming in front of it with a little bit of highlight and you will see me adding it later on. But now I'm already adding the base chicken color which is light yellow on top of my shadows to blend them in. And of course I'm filling in this part of the chicken's body with this color too and we will then work on more shadowing and highlighting. Here I'm coming in with a brighter, more vibrant yellow to add a bit of shadow underneath the wing, just between the leg and tummy. This is the place where definitely there are a lot of shadows. I'm trying to find the high points of the leg where the light would hit the most and I'm adding the white guarded wool here in really tiny layers because you have to be really careful with the highlights. I don't know why it's harder to blend them later on adding more layers of the base color. They are pretty stubborn and tend to still peek through so I'm really careful with them and I'm adding the as I already mentioned, carded white wool to create them and at the same time trying to enhance the shadow that is usually right next to the high point. Here in this case it would be between the leg and the tummy underneath the wing, this little triangle here. I'm adding a little bit of the warm yellow there to enhance the shadow. And the second placement for the highlight on the leg would definitely be the knee. I'm not sure if this is called the knee of the chicken, but I will call it a knee. This is the part that is sticking out quite a lot and would definitely have a lot of light coming on it. If we are sticking to the idea that the light is coming from the upper right, then I'm adding quite a bit of white carded wool there before filling in the rest of the leg with the base chicken yellow. Now 
Now the shadows I previously created on the tummy feel a bit too light and I'm coming back in this area and using my shadow colors to make this place a bit darker. I have changed the position of my chicken on the felting mat because I'm ready to work on the wing. And the first thing I notice is that the shadow that I already have created for the wing looks a bit too brown for me. So what I'm doing now is using the warm yellow that I have already used before and I'm blending it a bit on the brown line we created before. And I wanted to assure you that this process of changing your mind and wanting to edit something you created before is completely normal when creating wool paintings. It happens to me a lot because every time you are adding new shadow or new highlight, it can change the contrast of the picture overall. So don't be afraid to make these changes. Just make sure that you're not rushing your decisions and taking time off and walking away from the wool painting a little bit too, because this often helps to understand how you feel about the wool painting you have created and what changes you would like to see. And now I'm again following the simple steps that we already have talked about before today. I'm using the warm brown to add shadows underneath the wings, behind the leg, every logical place where a shadow should be. And then I'm following with warm, vibrant yellow to add a bit of a shadows where they are not that harsh and I'm blending this yellow together with the brown. And now I'm introducing a new color. Instead of using the same warm yellow I used up till now, I'm now adding a bit more orange tone to define the outer line of the back. You will see later on that this will help to create more crisp line or chicken will pop out of the background way better than if we would use the same yellow that we have used in the rest of the body. Sometimes these little changes really do help. Now I'm starting to add the base color to the wings and as you can see I'm overlapping the shadow parts a bit. So this time we are not trying to be super precise and not cover the previous lines. I am trying to follow the overall shape and guidance of the line that I have previously created but this little overlap will help the colors to blend nicely and look natural. And again, during this stage, you might notice that there is a little bit too much brown or you would like to see a little bit more of the shade underneath the wings. So feel free to go in with a color here. I'm using the bright yellow to make the shadows a bit softer. And I also decided that I want to define the little tail the chickens have with a little bit of that burnt yellow that I used to define the outer line of the back. So I added that and then proceeded to fill in the wings. Here you can see how I'm overlapping the outer line of the back I previously created with the base chicken color and this allows the fiber to blend together beautifully and there is just a little touch of definition there but my chicken is not blending with the background as it would be without this line. I decided to fill in the butt now before moving on to the details of the wing because there is not really a lot going on here. So I'm just taking my base 
chicken yellow and filling in the sections here, respecting the guidelines for the shadows that I have created previously, but making sure that the fibers are blending and the colors look like a nice complement to each other. At this stage, the back, the wing and the butt of my chicken reminds me of medieval paintings where there is only the middle value and then the darker shades defined. So I'm coming in with the warmer yellow and I'm adding a bit of a roundness to my chicken by placing it near the darker shadows that we previously defined. But now I'm just trying to add a bit of roundness before I move on to adding the white to the butt because chicken butts are white and I will use the bleach white for this section but if I'm not seeing the roundness in the rest of the chicken's body I might add a bit too much and then our chicken will not look proportionate so I suggest you follow the same process when you are creating your own chicken painting. All that's left now when all of the base colors are filled in is to match the contrast of the body to the contrast of the face. As you can see now the body looks really really light and a lot of shadows we previously defined are way more subtle now and of course we have to take into consideration the highlights and add a little bit of highlight in the wing too. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to use the browns and the bright yellow for the shadows again and go over the guidelines we created before, make them more intense and blend them together with the rest of the body too. And then later on I will move on adding a bit of the highlight in the top parts of the wings that would have the most light coming on them. Again, I will get quiet for a bit and I hope that this footage is helpful for you.
example of how forgiving needle felting is. I almost added too much of the base color and almost lost all of the progress I made with the shadow, but I can quickly pull off the fiber I just added, pull it apart a bit more to make the layer more sheer and place it back again and see what the difference it makes. This really is amazing craft and don't be afraid to try it out if you haven't yet needle felted any 2D pictures. But now we are ready to move on to creating the legs. I am now taking the same bright orange that we used for the base of the beak and the top part of the beak and I'm filling in the outline I have created for the leg that is closer to us. I'm focusing my pokes to really make sure that I am aligning them with the lines I created. I'm not too worried about uh, the feet and the fingers. I hope these are fingers. Again, I'm not an expert on chicken anatomy, so my apologies if I'm getting this terribly wrong. But I, what I was saying is that I'm not too worried about uh, the feet because we will add grass later on and it will cover most of it anyways. So don't worry if the feet is not extremely beautiful. And now I'm moving to the second leg and I'm again trying to stick with the lines, and, but I'm not too worried about the feet. I believe you have already noticed the pattern how I work when I'm creating wool paintings. So we laid out the base layer with the middle value color and now I'm going in with the darker brown and adding it on the second leg because this leg is underneath the chicken farther away from us and there should be a lot of shadow. I try not to cover the orange completely because chicken legs are pretty textured and uh, this means that there will be a lot of tonal changes in them. So do not worry again um, about being super precise. Just try to stick in with the lines to not make the legs too thick. But the placement of the brown can be a bit random. And of course I'm adding the brown to the front leg too, just a little bit less of it here. But overall there should be brown on the both legs because they are both in the shadow. I'm also adding it a bit underneath the fingers to create a more natural look. But again, do not worry about fingers too much because we will add a grass later on here. And I feel like highlights are still needed here, so I'm using this bright orange and adding tiny, tiny amount on the front leg to add a little bit of dimension. This will not be super huge, but it makes the legs look more realistic. I think I need to add a gray here to create a really, really dark shadow in between the legs, because right now they look kind of blended together. So I rolled a tiny bit of this gray between my fingers to make it easier to control and I'm creating straight line between both legs as I already have added the browns and the highlight line here. This is a really easy process and I think it does the trick. However, after adding it, I felt that my highlight is lost a bit. So I took the salmon color I used for the base for the beak and I added a tiny amount here at the front leg to create a little bit of highlight that would just help to add a bit more dimension. With that, I feel like my first chicken is finished. I will now spend a couple of minutes just felting it down using 
multi needle tool and then I will move on to its little friend. When I was creating this sketch for this wool painting, I already knew that I will be filming a video and I wanted to include two different chickens deliberately to show you how I would need to change the process for each of them. As you can see, I'm now taking the vibrant yellow that I usually use for shadows and I'm defining the shape of the head with it and drawing a couple of lines that are really important for the facial features. I will explain why in just a minute. I also wanted to show you that the eye shape doesn't have to be super precise and round because if you look at multiple pictures of chickens online you will notice that the eyes are not often rounded and you can work with a little bit more oblong shape here. I started with rolling the black wool between my fingers just like we did before but now when I'm working with my needle I'm guiding the wool a little bit differently. I'm not trying to create the super precise round circle but I'm angling my needle in different directions to create the shape I want. I'm also using the warm brown to add a little guide for the shade underneath the beak. So I promised to explain to you why am I approaching this little chicken a little bit differently than the first one. When we were working on the first chicken we started with this base middle value yellow that I call my perfect chicken yellow and first filled shape. Now we cannot do the same because this little guy has turned his head to the side and Thus, if we are looking at it as a flat painting, then if we would fill in the whole shape with the base value, then our chicken would turn into a yellow blob and later on it would be really hard for us to find the guidelines underneath this layer of wool and decide on how to add the shading. Now that I have added some kind of guides, at least for the part of the head that is turned towards the body, when we will add this base color, we will still see the shade speaking through and this will really help us tremendously later on when we are working on the facial features and shadows and contrast in general. I have been making wool paintings for about two years, maybe a little bit longer, and during this time this is really something that I have noticed and I try to implement in every painting where there are any body parts for my animals that are overlapping. Because we have to remember we are working in two dimensions and it's really easy to create flat looking painting if we are not thinking about the shadows and the highlights. So I always try to keep them in mind and create some kind of guides for myself that would help to work on the image and create depth. Of course the easiest way is to use picture and recreate it because then you can really look at the values you see in front of you and just pick the wool colors and blend them together to really recreate it. But I like to create my own designs, so I figured out that this is a great approach to use. Let me know if this is something new to you or you already have used similar techniques or maybe you have your own trade secrets that you are willing to share with us. The last thing I wanted to mention before getting quiet for a little bit while I finish filling the shape with the base color is that we are leaving the beak untouched for now. It's a really small shape and if we would fill it right now then later on when we are trying to add the base color for the body it would be really easy to accidentally cover 
the beak a bit too much and this would also skew the depth a bit. I don't know why but it's always best at least for me. Of course everyone can have their own techniques but I would suggest if you're a beginner to add the most detailed sections when you have filled the areas around them. This will help you to understand the shadows and understand the detail and the depth you need and you will not accidentally cover the precious work you have already done later on. It's time to paint the beak. Previously we used grey color to define the lower part of the beak, but now I'm using warm dark brown because this chicken hasn't turned his head all the way to the side and there is a little bit more light coming in for him. I'm using the same color to add a little line to define the shape of the head under the beak and I'm also adding it to the nostril part just as we did for the other chicken. For the top part of the beak I will move on to use the bright orange because again there is a little bit more light here. The shapes here are a bit abstract just like they were before so you can follow my lead here and try to replicate it or look up some images online and use them as a guideline. Remember that when you're working on such a small scale you can always roll the fiber between your fingers. This will make it more easy to control and also the color will be more intense as the fibers would be denser and closer together. I'm using the salmon color to fill in the top part of the beak to indicate the highlights and add a bit more contrast to the image overall. Don't be afraid to use scissors to cut off excess wool at any time. When the beak is finished we can now work on the shadows and highlights for the head shape. I felt like the line I have added to define the head is a bit too harsh so I'm covering it with the base yellow color that we used for the chicken's body and I'm coming back in with the warm brown really tiny amount to create a soft shadow here and then I'm moving on to work on the rest of the facial features. This is a kind reminder that you can always change your mind when needle felting. Here I placed the ear a bit too low and uh, after a couple of steps I was still able to pull the fiber off and just relocate it where I felt it's working better. I'm actually using the first chicken that I created as the guide on the facial features here but again you can always open up some images online and pick a face that you like. Remember to blend the colors. If something you add feels a bit too harsh you can always soften it by 
placing a really thin layer of the base color over it and felting it down. This beautifully mixes colors and makes everything really soft. Overall, as you can see, the process is pretty similar and you have already learned a lot by watching me felt the first chicken. However, I will leave in as much footage as possible in case it's useful for you. I feel like this second chicken is way easier because you already have the experience from the first one and it also is sitting down so there is way less detail in the body and you do not have to felt the legs. I also think that one chicken sitting and one chicken standing is a great scenario in case you're worried that your chickens would not turn out identical or maybe you struggle with recreating the same image again and again because if you accidentally create one chicken that you love the legs way more than the other this can bother you and really make the whole process harder and not that enjoyable. So creating each subject in a separate posing scenario, I guess, can be helpful if you're worried about these things. This time I decided to add a little highlight on the cheek to add a little bit of roundness to my chicken's face. can see so little of the wings and we have to simply add a tiny shadow here to define them. I noticed that my chicken shape is a bit out of place, it was super round, so I took uh, my needle and angled it towards the chicken's body and fixed the upper right side for him and you can see that now it's not so round anymore and it looks way more natural. The lower part of the belly is of course in shadow, so I'm adding quite a bit of color here. I'm using the warm brown, the really bright and intense yellow that I used before, and later on I will work on this section again, I think, to define it more. But now I'm just adding the base layer with a little bit of shadow, because of course if this is closer to the ground, under the chicken, there should be shadow there. Again, taking my needle and reshaping the other wing, you can use the multi-needle tool and also a single needle. Having this more tapered body shape will make your chicken look way more realistic. 
This is a great moment. I wanted to leave in the video to show you how sometimes it's a bit tricky to decide on the shadows. But wool paintings are great because you can just lay down the wool and check how you like it. Use your fingers to reshape it, turn the item around and felt it down only when you're certain that you like the placement of the fiber. This shadow here took me quite a bit of time, but at the end I was pretty happy about my decisions. So don't worry if this is taking you a little bit longer. It will usually look easier in the videos than it is in real life. So do not compare yourself and just enjoy the process. Remember to be super gentle and slow when you are peeling your painting off the mat and always, always hold it with one of your hands. I was trying to understand if my chickens are ready and they are not. I felt like the shadow on the belly was a bit too light. So I'm layering some more color here, blending it together with the base yellow that we used for most of the body to blend it in and I'm just enhancing the shadow a tiny bit more. This is also a great time to double check the shapes and make the final tweaks because then we will move on to work on the background and at that time it might be a bit too much to think about the shapes of your subjects at the same time thinking about the background. So just take your time right now, take a single needle and figure out if you need to tweak any of the shapes. And with that, we have finished the chickens. I'm so, so happy about it. And we will be able to move on on finishing the background. Let me know if you are still here. If you're leaving a comment, please add chicken emoji or just write chicken in it. So I know that you're still with me. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate every minute you watch. Here are my color choices for the sky. I'm using natural warm white instead of bleached white because I already used the bleached white in highlights for my chickens and if I would again use it in the sky this might take the focus away from the chickens so we are going for a bit of a cloudy day here and I'm laying down really thin layers of the grays the blue and the natural white first to build up the sky Nothing really changes from uh, the time that we were creating the base for the sky. I'm simply adding randomized patches of wool and felting them down. You might notice that I'm pressing on the fiber with my hand every time I'm placing it somewhere. This helps to condense the wool down a bit and to see the actual intensity of the colors that we will have later on. I also tried to pull the fiber apart as much as possible and I'm adding the white color as the last one. I find that this creates really beautiful and natural looking highlights in the sky and uh, it's really interesting effect. You can use multi-needle tool here. I will link the one I'm using in the description box below. By the way, if you do not know how to access the description box, just look for the show more text underneath the title of this video. Multi-needle tools are super useful for 
large areas like this. It makes the process faster and easier on your hands. Just remember that you need to add fine needles in them as they are located pretty closely and thicker needles simply would not work. So I'm using three 42 triangles in my multi-needle tool here. I did not include all of the felting process here because it took me quite a while and it was repetitive. I did not add any more wool, I just simply felt everything down. Here is the color selection for the greenery. We will use these two greens later on. And now instead of adding the base green we used before, I will use this more vibrant green in the transition between the sky and the ground. Look how much more vibrance and depth it adds to our wool painting. Again, I'm working with really, really thin layers and I'm adding this green only in the transition part from the sky to the ground. I'm not adding it in the foreground because there we will have different details for the grass. And I'm starting to felt it down with a single needle and I'm really, really careful in the areas around my little chickens. Remember how long it took for us to create them and we do not want to accidentally felt any green on top of them. So be really careful here and simply felt everything down. As we already have a um, little bit of base with the other green, colors are blending beautifully and you have really vivid and lively grass effect. Some of the fiber is overlapping with the blues of the sky, which is also helping the transition to look more natural. I cut out a little bit here because I was really taking my time and simply felting it down without adding any new wool. But then when I felt that this section is done, I noticed that this part of my wool painting is a little bit too dark. So here I'm layering on some of the natural white to create more brighter sky and add a little bit of clouds. I will not add any defined clouds here, so this abstract sky effect is everything that you will get today. However, I think it works beautifully with our highly detailed chickens. Now back to the green. I'm again working with a single needle and being really careful to push the fiber away from my chickens and not accidentally turn them green. When I feel sure that the fiber will not migrate onto my chicken and I have really secured it with the single needle, I'm taking my multi-needle tool and letting it do the work. Looks like the base for the background wasn't really that great in this area and I need to add the base green in the mix again. So I'm doing that in really thin layers. So I'm adding the vibrant green, then the base green we used before and going in between those two. Also a couple of touches with the natural white. And when I felt this all down, this will even out to look exactly as the other side of my painting. Although I do not have to be super precise about it, as we know, background is not symmetrical, 
So you should not worry about that too. Now it's time to work on more detailed greenery and the flowers. I'm trying to not go too dark and I'm starting with one of the flower stems. I'm using wool tops but this should also work with wool bat. I'm taking a little bit of fiber here and twisting it between my fingers to make it more easier to control. Then I lay it down and uh, try to figure out what kind of shape I would like to follow. Maybe you can still see through the red lines from the iron-on pencil. I know that I did, but if you don't, don't worry about it too much because flowers can be a bit abstract and you can just follow the wool here. Now, as you can see, I anchored the top part of the stem and uh, I'm really twisting the wool to keep it really nice and thin to create uh, this line that is a little bit curved. Going down, I'm twisting it less to make the stem a little bit thicker. At this stage, I'm simply anchoring the wool down. I will speed this section up quite a bit because there is not much going on, but I'm just simply anchoring it down in the shape that I have envisioned and then I will go over it once again from the bottom up to really felt it down and make it flat because right now as I'm twisting it, it's a bit bulky, but don't worry about that. This is the best technique to create the stem that is thinner at the top and gets a bit thicker towards the bottom. Now you can see how the shape changes when I'm flattening it and I'm trying to really angle my needle. This helps me to not change the shape too much and just focus on flattening everything out. I'm using exactly the same approach for the second stem. Creating the leaves for the flowers are super simple and easy. Basically, the wool is doing all the work for you. All I'm doing here is laying some strands of wool down and simply felting at random. I'm really not trying to follow any specific pattern here. The needle is catching the fiber and just anchoring it down. Super fast, super easy and looks really effective. Later, when we will finish our flowers, we will add a little bit darker color here. So don't worry if it looks a bit flat right now. When you're happy with the density of the leaves, take your multi-needle tool and flatten everything down. I have envisioned red bell-shaped flowers, so I'm taking tiny amounts of this red wool and rolling it in between my fingers to create this shape. And then I will take my needle and felt everything down. This time my pokes will define the shape, so be careful if you're trying to recreate this look, not to poke where you don't want your wool to anchor.
I also experimented with adding a little bit of yellow to the flowers, but then later on you will see me trying to cover it up with the red because it ended up looking a bit too much. Again, needle felting is super forgiving and you do not have to worry about ruining anything if you are working with small amounts of wool. You will be always able to add a little bit more. Now it's time to add more depth using the dark green. In some places I'm rolling fiber between my fingers to create straight leaves like I'm doing now. In the other parts I will just try to spread the wool as much as possible and felt it down. Remember to work with small amounts and really really thin layers. You will be able to add more wool if needed and simply let the wool guide you in the process. I would also like to address the needle marks. You do not have to worry about them. These will disappear when we later on work on the piece a little bit more and go over it to felt everything down really well. If this section feels too dark for you, remember that you can always take the middle value green we use to create the base for our background, remember at the beginning of the video? You can take that color once again, lay a thin layer of it over the greenery you have created and felt it down. Look how better it looks now. Another cute detail I would like to add is little tiny flowers in orange, white and teal. I'm taking small amounts of these colors, rolling them between my fingers to create tiny balls and then I'm felting them down in random places between my greenery. This is a nice touch that again adds to the depth and to the interest of the overall image. You can choose your own colors and try it out yourself. Okay, now we have our chicken and we have our flowers, but let's be honest, they look like they are simply plastered on the background. So to fix this, we are going to take various shades of green and plan our grass. This is going to be a super fun process and you will be able to decide on the density and the colors before really settling for anything. I'm taking small amounts of wool, starting with the darker green, but you can start with whichever color you like, and I'm rolling it between my fingers to create a single grass strand. You can also fold it over, creating two of them at a time. And I'm starting with the area around the sitting down chicken, because he is probably quite covered with the grass, at least in the front of him. So here I'm adding little sections of grass in the dark green and look how natural it is. Wool is absolutely perfect for it and it's doing most of the work itself. 
Do not worry about the lower part of the image, we will fix that later on. Now let's focus on the first line of grass. Now I'm creating grass strands from lighter shades of green and I'm adding them in the same line overlapping with the dark green in some places. This will add some depth and again do not worry about uh, the front of the image. It's going to look great, just trust me and stick with me, I will show you how to work with it. Now it's time for the magic. I'm taking my multi-needle tool and I'm felting down the top part of the grass strands. You can use a single needle if you want to, but multi-needle tool will speed up the process. Pay close attention to how the grass looks when you are felting it down. Here I noticed that I did not like the thick dark green grass here, so I pulled it off. This is the last moment when you can do that. I pulled it off and replaced it with a couple of thinner strands. Now that all of the grass strands are secured at the top part, I'm taking the scissors and cutting the rest of the greens off. I know that it might look a bit awkward now, but we will add more layers of the grass in front of this little line and it will look amazing. This little section right here was not on my felting mat, so I need to rearrange everything a bit to finish it off before we can move on to the next line of grass. And now the process just repeats again and again. I'm simply adding new strands of the grass in different colors, but now I'm focusing on the front part of the painting. Of course, don't forget about adding the little flowers. 
I would suggest trying to create different sizes and I like to lay out one color at a time and felt them down only when I'm happy with the placement. This technique helps me to decide on how I want the flowers to look and where I want them to be placed and it also helps to keep the distribution of the colors even. First I'm anchoring everything down with a single needle and then going in with the multi-needle tool and just quickly flattening everything out. I'm finally able to work on the left side. It did not fit on my felting mat before, so now when everything else is finished, I can move on to this section. Here I'm adding grass just like we did before in the foreground, but on the left side, I will also add a couple of longer grass strands just to make the overall composition a bit more harmonious. There isn't really anything different about this process, we already did it before, but this time I'm just taking longer strands of wool. Now that I'm happy with my greenery, I will spend a little bit of time going over the whole painting and fixing everything that seems to be loose. And when I'm happy with it, I will move on to framing it. Here it is all nice and flat and ready for framing. I wonder how many of you made it to this part. Let me know in the comments. Write chicken if you're leaving me any of the comments or add a little chicken emoji. I would be really curious how many of you made this far. Okay, now I'm using embroidery hoop to frame my work. Here I'm opening it up and we will place the inner hoop on the table. Then I'm taking my wool painting and placing it on top of the inner hoop and here I'm carefully aligning those two. You can press the fabric down and check if the fold line aligns with the outer edge of the inner hoop. When you're happy with the placement, you can take the outer hoop and place it on top of the fabric. The screw is almost fully open and I'm trying to make sure that the screw is straight up and it's not on one of the sides because it would be really hard to fix that one later. And I'm gently pressing the outer hoop down. Sorry about the focus here, my camera is struggling. But basically I pressed the outer hoop onto the fabric and it locked everything in. Now you can simply close the screw and check all of the edges. Maybe you need to pull them. Please be very, very, very careful when you're pulling the fabric. You can actually damage your painting if you are pulling too hard. You can also press the work against the table and pull lightly that way. When you're really happy with it, really tighten the screw. It should be super, super tight. Now I'm quickly cutting off excess fabric. I'm leaving around two centimeters here because we will want later on to wrap this fabric around the hoop to really secure it. So now just quickly 
cut the bulk off. Now it's time to thread your sewing needle. Be really generous with the thread because we will need enough of it to go all the way around your wool painting. I would also suggest you using a double thread, preferably in the same color as your background fabric. This time I used white so you can see what I'm doing better. Tie a knot and secure the thread in the top section of your wool painting. I'm just quickly going through the loop that I have created. And now all you have to do is simple stitch all the way around. I'm trying to keep my stitches in the middle part of this excess fabric. And when you complete the whole circle and pull really, really tightly, the fabric will wrap around the edge like this. See? That's the magic of the editing. Everything is done already. So now I can really pull it tightly. This was the reason why we used the double thread. I'm holding the tension with the thumb of my left hand. And all I have to do now is secure the thread. If something doesn't look even, you can take your scissors and go around it once more. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you gained something. I tried to include as much information as possible. Remember that you can always reach out to me, leave a comment, hit the like button if you liked this video and see you in my next one.